you guys can see my screen yes sir only can see okay yeah all right so uh before i get started uh, let me give you a background about myself uh, i have uh, 15 years of uh, experience and uh, in my 15 years i have uh, more than 20 years into informatica suite of products and for the past uh, five years i've been working on iscs so this training is about uh, informatica intelligent cloud services data integration so the agenda would be uh, we'll discuss about uh, informatica cloud about you know overview overview about iscs components of iscs and ipass solution what is ipass features of ipass informatica cloud terminologies and we'll discuss in detail about the architecture and most importantly we need to understand about uh, runtime environment and security agent and how do we get started so this is agenda for today so moving on uh, first thing that comes to our mind is you know what is informatica cloud right informatica cloud is an on-demand subscription service that provides a complete platform for cloud data integration for cloud integration and data management so when we speak about uh, cloud we, we've been working on on-premise uh, data uh, for so many years, right? And we also need to, we need to change as for the evolving needs. So what is cloud and, you know, what is a, what is a need of the R? Like, you know, what would be the need of the R? And we need to understand how does it cater your requirements? You know, it provides ability to create and configure your connections. You can create users, you can create, run, schedule and monitor your tasks. So you can do a lot of things in the, in the IACS uh, UI. And when we speak about components, we have uh, runtime environments, Informatica Cloud Secure Agent, organization and connections. So we'll discuss about each thing in detail before I go there. I want you to understand about IPaaS. What is an IPaaS solution? So IPaaS, as the name says, it is it stands for Integration Platform as a Service, which is a suite of uh, cloud uh, services that would actually ensure your integration flows connecting any combination of on-premise data and cloud-based processes or services or applications and data within individual or multiple org organizations. So when I say, you know, on-premise data, something which is hosted within your organization, something that is sitting behind the organization firewall, right? It can be your on-premise data. And you can access it from any machine with an internet access and web browser application. And when you access this application, you, you, you just need to launch your browser and connect to the services through a secure HTTP protocol. So that's that's a brief understanding about IPaaS. So IPaaS is like you know where uh, you have an orchestration, you have an enterprise uh, level orchestration that is supposed to build, and we also have uh, centralized uh, monitoring capabilities. So as I keep telling, right? I mean, uh, uh, you know, you can access it from any machine, which means that you know you can do a collaborative effort as a team. You can log into the browser and you can perform your data integration and you can ensure your entire team is in sync. So when you access your application, your browser connects to the cloud through a protocol, HTTP protocol. And this platform is having uh, multiple toggle switch wizards, you know, which would help you to do different level of uh, functionalities, you know, like be it an admin or you want to, you want, uh, you want to do as a developer or you want to be as a support, uh, you know, from a support team, you want to monitor your task flows, or you want to, you want to just, you know, do some, some kind of debugging. You can have these options using multiple toggle switch visits, and you can even build a dashboard using your uh, operational insights, which is a 
part of uh, the service that the IACS would offer. And we, we can also see something called uh, centralized monitoring capabilities to track your progress and results of your jobs. And the pre-configured integration templates for uh, recurring business use cases. We also get a lot of uh, templates which, which would help you to actually, you know, uh, have a pre-configured template. You know, you don't have to worry about uh, creating a pattern of template, you know, where you would have something which is a common business use case. You can start working on it. So any, any questions on iPaaS from anyone? Okay. So Informatica Cloud Terminologies. So these are a uh, few of the terminologies, you know, what I, uh, I could put it here, uh, which are more uh, related to the cloud terminologies like add-on connector, you have agent, assets, bundles, component, connection, uh, data integration server, you have Informatica Cloud Hosted Agent, file listener, hosting facility, cloud secure agent, cloud secure agent manager, intelligent structured model, job, linear task flow. So there are so many uh, terminologies as in like, but I just want to highlight a few, you know, as for someone from powers in the background. For example, like, you know, you have a, you have a mapping in power center. In ISAS, we also have a mapping. And in power center, you have a session, right? Same session, uh, in IACS, you have a mapping task. And in uh, Power Center, we have a workflow. In IACS, we have a task. So these are the basic differences between Power Center and IACS. Probably, you know, someone from the Power Center background, they can easily relate it to this. So Power Center and IACS, the comparisons would obviously, they are, uh, you know, uh, Eventually, the comparisons would come up, but again, you know, this is a model which is based on integration platform as a service. And Power Center, you may have to launch your client, your client tools and service. I mean, your uh, client server architecture. You know, you you have a client server architecture in Power Center. Whereas in ISCS, you you connect to a browser, and you know you. You start working on different services in ISCS. And the functionalities are, moreover, the functionalities are derived from Power Center, but you have a uh, larger uh, functionality in ISCS where you navigate through different services and you know you can connect to uh, different uh, applications, different external applications, or probably you can you can connect to something like a Salesforce, or you can connect to AWS, Azure, you have a lot of things. Everything is connected through. Everything is through a connector. So I'm not reading all this. This is only for, uh, you know, to have you understand. I mean, you, you, you can understand about uh, the cloud terminologies. These are a few of them. Any, any questions on this before I move on? I hope you you're able to understand if you are having any questions please stop me let's give a brief uh, understanding about ipass what is ipass all about and this is about you know cloud terminologies i'll move on to architecture if you, if you don't have any questions okay. iacs cloud architecture how does the architecture would work right if you look at the user here, the user uh, logs in to a browser, to a machine, a web client, and you know, when he supplies his credentials, you know, he logs into a user, I mean, he logs into a browser. Uh, so there would be a design and administration function, which is, you know, uh, the metadata gets exchanged to Informatica hosted multi tenant repositories. This is where, you know, if you look at this picture, right, there are uh, intelligent cloud services and you see there is a firewall in between. This is a firewall. 
which is an organization firewall, which is customer managed. You know, you have a secure agent within the firewall, which is sitting behind the firewall of an organization where, you know, the customer would manage a secure agent, which is called a customer managed secure agent. It can be in a Windows environment or a Linux environment where the connections are encrypted and, you know, all the logs, you see that um, there would be a connectivity. And, you know, this can be through a proxy and also with the help of uh, integrating SAML. And SAML is something, you know, a single sign-on feature uh, where it would enable uh, this, uh, when, when you enable this SAML uh, feature, when you get in touch with your Active Directory team and you enable the SAML ability, it would enable single sign-on across multiple services so that, you know, you don't have to sign in every time. Now, when a user logs in uh, to a web client and performs a design or administration function, what typically happens is the metadata, whatever the metadata that is being built, the metadata gets transmitted or you know, it gets loaded to your Informatica Cloud hosted repository, which is based on the microservices. There are different microservices. The model is based on microservices with a multi-tenant repository. This metadata is getting stored. So it's not actual data. It's all about the metadata that is getting stored in the repository. So this is how an organization would control its data you know uh, they have their own security concerns where they want to uh, control the sensitive data right so how do they do it they do it through customer managed security so the actual data resides within the firewall only the metadata store gets stored in the multi-tenant repositories so you know this is multi-tenant repositories you know where uh, you have a model of uh, informatica managed secure agent uh, manage runtime secure agent and process server. So if you look at this, again, you know, the business data, uh, which is in a HTTPS model, you know, you have a security diagram where you can even connect to uh, the cloud apps, which include something like Marketo, NetSuite, Workday, Salesforce, LinkedIn, you know, so many external uh, things, right? You give me one minute. Okay, I'm back, uh, sharing my screen. Yeah, so I was uh, talking about, you know, the security diagram where uh, the business data gets, uh, you know, you, you actually talk to an application like, you know, a Salesforce or, uh, you know, any different connector, which is, which is your cloud app, right? And you can even connect to your external sources and you can bring in your data or you can even store your data. The data transfer happens through the business data through your HTTPS, you know, protocol. So if you look at this, the on-premise data of the applications, you know, for example, you have an Oracle or a SQL Server and database and you have your uh, table level information, the columnar level, level information that that's all managed even the file level information, the files, everything is managed at your secure agent. The secure agent manages your files. It manages your uh, data from Oracle or SQL Server, any of your database instances. And you know, we do uh, different functionalities like design and administration. So any, any questions on this uh, architecture from anyone?
Anyone has any questions on this architecture? Yeah, one question from my side. Uh, just I'm yeah. asking about yes. the security. Is it a table level security or column level security or user level security? Uh, security as in the metadata you're talking about or uh, what is it? Like your uh, I'm asking about, about the security. I'm asking about the metadata. Metadata only. Okay. So the metadata is uh, it's all about you know the data that is stored in the repository it will have you know the information that you run when you run a mapping when you run a mapping task or when you run a task flow whatever the data that is getting stored right that's all the metadata gets exchanged it's it's all about you know the data. i'll just tell you about when we speak about uh, the security model you know how do you, how do we have this security model if you look at this picture right this is all about metadata here. Now you have an application, you have a data warehouse and legacy databases on the on-premise data. So this data is getting uh, stored in your, I mean, through secure agent, it connects to your databases and the metadata gets exchanged to intelligent cloud services, which is an Informatica hosted repository, multi-tenant repository. So it's actual data, you know, not at a, when you say uh, table level or column level, right? You get the entire information stored at a uh, at a specific object level. You know, for example, uh, in, it's not in the case like a uh, case of a on-premise database where you have your uh, metadata stored in a table where you can write a query and retrieve the metadata information. We can't do that way because. This is how it is there in ISCS where everything is designed through your uh, API. Okay, API. What is API? API stands for Application Programming Interface. You have a connectivity that is, you know, through a browser. When you are connected to a browser, you are actually connecting to uh, a repository and you are entering your information something like similar like you know uh, to just give you an example right uh, for example i uh, this is a net banking website right let's say this is your uh, this is your uh, this is a hcfc net banking site so what happens in hcfc net banking site you know when a user you know when you actually a user logs in right user logs in uh, a user logs in through his using his uh, credentials, right? So he he provides some uh, username and password. Right? He does a username and password uh, into the net banking site, and this site would uh, authenticate the user on the browser, right? On the browser, it authenticates the user with the credentials that are being supplied and it allows the user to log into the net banking site. So this is happening over the internet, right? So this is how it is there in, uh, in a when the user logs into a web client through your, uh, the salmon provider also is an optional thing where uh, this is not a mandatory thing. We still have the native connectivity. The user performs design and also performs administration functions, and the metadata gets stored into the repositories. Yeah, and it also connects to your cloud apps uh, using your security. So security is something like your integration service in Power Center, where it uh, performs the kind of a communicator job, you know, which would ensure data is being transmitted from your local machine to the Informatica cloud hosted. Deposit. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, what my I thought actually security means actually data going to be encrypted, and already already you noticed about micro. Hmm. Micro services. Yeah, it's all encrypted metadata. The encrypted metadata. It's not actual data. You know, for example, if I uh, talk about something uh, like you know, if I just get I take it something like name. For example, name I gave John. Right. For example, name is John. So the actual data that is getting stored is, for example, you know, you have this, right? Something like uh, not in a readable format, 
like you know something uh, some weird format right i mean some encrypted format you have this data that is stored in the repositories it won't be the actual data that is stored it would be an encrypted format okay. it's an example i'm just giving it to you right so uh, Aaron, the architecture uh, model is, yeah Aaron, uh, this is uh, i have one more question regarding the security agent so mm -hmm. like uh, this security agent we use only to connecting uh, to establish the connection or uh, to communicate with the local databases on premises or we can use this for even cloud sir i mean cloud database cloud databases also yeah, yeah. you can use this uh, this is a this is a kind of a bridge you know it's a communicator it's kind of a integration okay. service where it talks to your local uh, uh, databases which are on your own uh, organization behind the firewall and also your cloud apps. So if you look at this picture, right, the cloud apps, it's yeah. able to communicate. The customer managed secure agent can communicate with this cloud apps, right? Including okay. your on-premise data using like SQL or Oracle or SQL Server, right? And also your okay. flat files. It does both ways. Uh, okay. okay, and uh, like, you know, when you create, uh, any uh, like objects like tables or whatever uh, target so that metadata gets stored in uh, your metadata repository correct yeah it gets stored in the informatica hosted repository not in our repository there is nothing called our repository uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. correct correct i understand so hmm. yeah with that context i am asking like you know the microservices when you uh, execute any job or something like microservices bring those data and then uh, i mean use that and then you create the job how it works right correct, correct. see microservices oh. uh, that that is an architecture which is uh, controlled by the vendor you know the informatica vendor we don't know that okay. you know we don't know how the model how do they control that but that is based on the microservices architecture you know where they okay. have different services and they divide them. for example uh, they they have the services to control user level uh, data to one service they they have a service that is configured to you know to control the task level information to one different service and they have another uh, service that is configured for task load we don't know how do they do that because it's all managed by informatica so what we do what we control is we control our security region, what we host in our environment or see this is my personal laptop right it's a personal laptop on my laptop i can i can control my things i can have my own data but i i i, don't, I really don't know how do they manage their services it's it's based on their uh, architecture uh, plan right so that's how it is there on the top if you see this the multi-tenant repositories the services if you are asking me in detail about how the services are designed we we really don't know that i mean we, we are not aware of it. Yeah, yeah. Probably okay. they would have their own design. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank so, you. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. So this is how the architecture would work. And you know, uh, to just further explain about, you know, we'll we'll do a demo. You know, we'll do a demo with the job. I'll show you the services also, including the secure agent, so that you get the complete idea about it. And again, you know, this repository, uh, just a, you know, just a continuation with the architecture. You have different services when you configure your when you sign up for free trial account you get uh, administration design configuration and maintenance if you look at this this red bricks are called your firewall right within the firewall so you have a repository you have a machine with your internet uh, access and you can perform these functions so this is a cloud-based uh, platforms and secure agent is actually talking to your cloud and it also talks to your cloud-based applications and platforms and your company is managing your own data and this is a further uh, explanation about you know how does it work with the local files and databases you have a machine with browser internet access and you have a local file and a database and a secure agent which controls your local files and databases so the metadata the schema changes or schedule level information uh, through HTTPS protocol, they get exchanged to Informatica Cloud hosted repository and also the business data using a secure protocol like you know Salesforce. Salesforce, we can even connect to Salesforce from Secure Agent and we can send the metadata uh, to Informatica Cloud, right? So this is a uh, 
an extension of what I uh, explained in the architecture. So let's uh, look into the components of ISCS. You know, we have Informatica Cloud, hosting facility, runtime environment, and agent. So to give you an understanding about what all, what is a secure agent, what is a runtime and agent, runtime environment. So runtime environment is, you know, you need a runtime environment. In case of power center, we need an integration service to, you know, to execute a workflow. You can't just execute a workflow like that, right? You need an integration service to execute a workflow to have your source data uh, loaded to target. You need an integration service. So that is similar to your runtime environment here. And what is an agent? Agent is a program, you know, within your network. If you know, uh, you have an agent that would actually make sure that it's a it's a communicator or it, it is a bridge that would ensure that you know it is talking to your Informatica Cloud hosting facility. So you can have something like a grid concept also with an agent, which will uh, you know something like an agent. We also have an Infa Secure Agent Group, which I'll tell you in a moment. And what is Informatica Cloud Secure Agent? Please uh, try to understand the difference here. There are two things. One is a runtime environment that runs within your network is called Secure Agent, but Informatica Cloud Hosted Agent. There is a Secure Agent and Hosted Agent. Hosted Agent means which is controlled by Informatica vendor, Informatica company. As a company, Informatica would control this. So it is called Informatica Cloud Hosted Agent. But whereas secure agent is something within your control or within your network. Okay. But you need to have a license to have a cloud runtime if you want to use a hosted agent for an Informatica. Okay. Any any questions on this? Uh, this is just an explanation, which I'll tell you when I show you the interface. Uh, I don't know. This is from the security yeah. model. Yeah. Uh, so, who is going to provide the compute power here? Who is going to provide what? Uh, compute power. Compute? Yeah. So, uh, compute power in the sense like you are you, asking about resources like CPU or uh, memory. Yes, yes, all yes, that. yes, right? yes. Yeah. That should be controlled, that should be within the organization, you know, which, which is hosting your which is having your secure agent set up, right? For example, when we talk about uh, Walmart, you know, and as an institute, right? Walmart as a, as a client or target or any major uh, retail store, they should have their own logistics. And they, should, they should be able to have their own compute resources for that. It's like, you know, a solution that is provided by Informatica, IPaaS, right? IPaaS, as I told you, right? Info integration platform as a service. So they, they provide a license and you know the you you actually configure your ISCS within your network and you take care of your own compute whatever resources that you need right okay so moving on to the security model you know security model is customer managed security model where you it's all like internet you know you you just carry your uh, your your laptop within your domain, you carry it to any place. You don't have to launch something within your laptop or you know you don't have to launch your client services, connect to a repository, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about connectors and all that. I mean, connectors in the sense like you don't have to worry about launching a service which is installed on your computer. This is all internet based where, you know, the data center infrastructure security it is based on that security model, data center infrastructure security model, and ISCS platform security. So this is similar to what I what I've explained to you, but the security model. That's a difference. When we look into the detail, how does it work? Per role or per assignment, you have an identity as an admin. You know, as an administrator, you're you're a super admin. You know, you have complete access to all functionalities, you know, all things that, you know, you can control your resources. They're called assets in ICS, where you have, you do, you do your security configuration. You can manage your tasks, task flows, processes. You can even control your API based executions, job results. You can do everything as an administrator, right? 
and the designer see if you look at the identities admin can be one person and designer can be multiple like developers are multiple in organizations you'll be having probably one or two administrators who manage the entire environment and they take care of the operations uh, needs and they take care of any uh, rolling upgrades they don't even do, do that actually because uh, ISES has a self upgrading agent which I'll tell you in a minute sometime now a designer what is a designer role a designer role can do tasks can they, they can execute a task they can run the task flows they can run processes they can you know view the job results API based executions they can do all this and we also have one more role called service consumer what is a service consumer so service consumer is uh, typically you know uh, something like an operator uh, role where you have api based executions and job results so different different roles you know for different uh, you know different uh, teams you know who performs different level of functionalities okay so any, any questions, you know, before I go on and then I'll explain you how to get started from anyone on this role based access controls. Okay. So to get started, you know, what do we need to get started? Uh, let me uh, tell you that. So to get started, what you need to do is you need to try Informatica Cloud Data Integration free try, right? And you need to go to your uh, the site cloud data integration free trial and you need to sign up for a free trial account a free trial account is valid for 30 days and you know this is this will help you to get familiar with ISES and get be more confident in your job if you are if you are uh, moving on to an ISES project from power center because future is ISES uh, probably I, I don't know if uh, many of you know this but uh, the thing is like you know the power center support is moving off to ICS probably next one to two years that's all uh, Arun, Arun Venu here I have one question here yeah uh, so yeah. you're saying that the power center is going to move for ICS right hmm. Hmm. Uh, but I have a question for example already some projects is developed in Informatica so they wanted to hmm. migrate from uh, Informatica to ISS is it possible or else uh, we need to write from that uh, development from scratch yeah I'll tell you that you know because see uh, power center is completely on a different uh, architecture right it's a client server architecture and you have a, a database where it stores some metadata like you know you have an XML component where you when you export a workflow you have an XML component right but in ISS it's yes. all it's all like a JSON based, uh, you know, fun uh, functionality where when you export the code, it is a different thing. I will, I will come and I'll, I'll clarify that, you know, let me complete this. I'll come back to your question. Okay. Sure. Because as part of a free trial account, what it needs for this account, I'm just explaining it to you, to everyone. Actually, we just have to provide something like your first name, last name, your job title, work email. You need to provide your Gmail ID and, you know, you provide your if you check if you provide your work email or do not provide work email provide your gmail id if you are uh, working on your personal thing personal laptop for your practice and use your email address as your username if you want to use it then you can check this box if you don't want to use it provide a username something like test right test provide something something like test and you know just provide a list of architect or developer whatever it is just provide that phone number give some random phone number organization provide something like you know uh, some freelancing or whatever you want to put just give some organization name select your country uh, for example you just provide India you know just provide the state city and you know pin postal code you can do whatever you want to do it as per uh, the state and city that you live in and data center location you can choose either either of these three Asia Pacific North America or Europe but I generally uh, prefer North America. I select North America and you know, I select these two boxes. Click on start your free trial. So the moment you click on start your free trial, what happens is you get a mail trigger to your mailbox. You get a mail trigger to your mailbox from admin at informaticacloud.com to activate your account. 
Okay, you activate your account, you get a mail. Uh, admin at Informatica Cloud, right? Admin at Informatica Cloud dot com. You get a mail like this, you know, uh, welcome to Informatica family, uh, please verify me now, right? You just get a mail ID like this, you just have to confirm this. Once you confirm this, you know, just make a note of this username and login you are. Just put it in a notepad, keep it handy for you. So, I've already signed up to my free trial account, so I have a free trial account. So, I'm going to show you now, how do you log into the IACS interface? This is the base you are called dm-us informaticacloud.com the moment you type in this gets redirected to identity service home right just click on sign in so the moment you sign in right you get uh, you get your services which are configured as part of your free trial account you get a data integration you get administrator monitor and operation insights these are the services as part of your free trial account when you click on show all services, you get a lot larger uh, services with data quality, governance, and Informatica Cloud is also having application integration, uh, P2P portals, integration, PC to cloud conversion. There are a lot of other services, but we are only talking about Informatica Cloud, IACS, and data integration here. This training is focusing only on the data integration service. Okay. So now when you log in, Right. When you log in and now how do you launch the services? You have to just right click, open a new tab, right click and open a new tab. This is how you, you can do multiple toggle switch. You know, you can just toggle around these services. Okay. So the first thing is your administrator service and you know, you need to go to administrator service first. And in the administrator service, you would find Informatica Cloud Posted Agent by default for all of your free trial accounts when you configure your free trial account you get this informatica cloud postal agent if you would need to go to runtime environments you see that you get this informatica cloud postal agent but what did i do i'm not using that because we don't have to use this we need to use a local security agent because i have my oracle instance and I also have my flat flat files uh, in my machine, right? So I need to have a local secure agent. How did I get my local secure agent? I need to click on download secure agent and, you know, just copy your install token. Go to uh, this and, you know, just paste it somewhere. Keep it handy. Download your secure agent. Once it's downloaded, you need to create a uh, folder like you know for example I have taken D drive you know do not go for a C drive uh, program files uh, default location I have take created a folder called security under my D drive D drive so in my D drive I gave this path and this gets installed the security gets installed in this location okay so the most important thing is uh, you know these are the administrator services you find a lot of services here right administrator uh, all the services are there which we'll be covering in detail uh, when we start with the training but data integration right this is a dashboard this dashboard is having home runtime environments my jobs recent assets and all that right so how do you create a job right i'll just create a simple job uh, for this uh, demo purpose so you have new assets all these are called assets mapping task synchronization task masking power center data transfer and in the mappings you you get uh, create mappings and you get the templates here and you also get maplets and task flows right so for example i want to create a mapping if i just go to mappings and click on create I get a mapping canvas. This is called a mapping canvas. This entire thing is called mapping canvas. And these are called shapes. What are these called? Shapes. The source and target is a shape. You know, by default, when I created a mapping, I get a, I get this uh, source and target by default. I can just change the mapping name. 
for example i just change it to m underscore uh, customer and sleep demo i want to load a file to my database but what do i need for my loading to my file to my database i need to have a connections so how do i create my connections i go to the connections tab in my administrator and you know we can have multiple connections i have multiple connections here one is my flatware connection i also have an oracle connection which we'll discuss in detail in our training session but i just want to show you how do i run a simple mapping for example i go to my source and then you know i maximize this this is how you maximize and minimize your window click on maximize and you select your uh, flat file connection this is your let's say this is your flat file connection now you can choose objects you know how do, how do i get this uh, objects because i gave a path within my secure region so that it can talk to my instance talk to my uh, you know my uh, file right? so i can just search for this file customer you see that in my connection underscore flat files this is actually pointing to my local path where i have my flat file i'm just searching for customer central dot txt click on ok i get the file now if i want to configure my target so there are if you just look at this orange one right what is this orange one orange one is called clear recommendations so what are clear recommendations clear recommendations in informatica right what are these clear recommendations these are the recommendations uh, provided you know where you want to it would recommend some transformation types to include in the mapping for example it is recommending and the orange ones is expression filter router all these ones right so these are called clear recommendations okay we'll not get into that now the transformations and all but i'm just giving a simple mapping here now i have to configure my target how do i configure click on target select your flat, uh, database connection click on select and here you get an ability to you get an option to choose an existing target or you want to create new at runtime click on create new at runtime target customer demo let's i just give the name like this pgt uh, pgt customer demo let's click on save so i just created a I'm, I'm loading a flat file to my database you should get a prompt the mapping is valid how do you get you get this validation and you should get a prompt as mapping is valid here on the right hand side right now we have completed the mapping it's a simple mapping i'm just loading my file to database if i just click on save uh the mapping is saved the mapping was saved successfully you get a prompt like that right now to run the mapping i can just run the mapping alone a standalone mapping or i can even run with a task i can copy this mapping name click on the three dots here and click on new mapping task but why do i need my mapping task to run this this is like your session right it has got a larger functionality you know uh, not just running a mapping at all but you can even have a schedule tab here where you can schedule a job you just provide mcd mcd stands for mapping configuration task select your local secure region group and click on next now the second step right the schedule step it will give you the options to schedule a job to notify an email to your email id for any success or failure or warning and pre-processing post-processing command and you know you get the parameter files you get advanced session properties there are a lot of added features in your schedule tab so we're not doing it now and just click on finish so that's how you create a mapping configuration task. So all of you, I guess you understood this. What did I do? I just created a mapping, a simple mapping, and I created a mapping task. Now, if I want to run this, I can run it directly, right? So before I run it, I keep my monitor also open. Just keep monitor open so that, you know, you, it's, a, it's like a browser, you know, just a browser in the sideways. 
you just open a new tab, new tab and you have your monitor open and you can see the running jobs here if you want to see the jobs that have run previously all jobs if i click on all jobs okay you would find all the jobs that have run that i have run i mean these are all my previous batch jobs right so you can see the number of jobs that are running here running jobs is the one that you would run it now okay i'll just click on run the moment i click on run you can see that you know this can be viewed in my jobs and also you can do it in see it in monitor also in the running jobs you can see it in two places under monitor also in your data integration my jobs okay now the most important thing is uh, the status the status is showing a starting and from starting it will go to queued status you see updates are available if i just click on this it says uh, from queue to running, running to, it will give you the status of success or failed. So it is still running right now. So I can click on the instance name to view the metadata statistics. To view the metadata statistics of my job, which will have an instance ID of one from task name, what time it started, who started this, what time it ended, how many rows it loaded. So this is my uh, table name, right? I can just go back to my uh, this thing and I can just uh, select uh, start from. Okay, this will uh, give you give my entire uh, data that is that I have loaded from my flat file, right? So this was a flat file that I loaded into my database. I hope you understood this. Uh, this is how you do it. And you know, when we go to the project uh, hierarchy, right? We go to this explore option under all projects. For example, if I want to create a new project, I can click on new project. For example, I have an ongoing batch for December. I created a project called IACS uh, training December, and then a project inside that project, I have a folder called practice. I, I clicked on practice folder. And in this folder, I'm doing all the my, uh, you know, my sessions, right? Similarly, when I start a new, uh, new batch, what I can do is I can start one more, one more uh, project, and I can start working on in that project. But again, the main thing is the license would be valid only for 30 days. How do you see the license? You go to administrator page, and you see this is called organization. Okay. This is an organization. I just gave some random name. And if I click on this uh, notifications, you would get a notification like sometimes, you know, your um, org is not valid. I mean, sorry, your license. If you want to see the license, uh, you get a prompt saying that, you know, this is valid only till this date because it gives only for 30 days, not beyond 30 days. Started on 17 December. It is going to end on Jan 16th. okay any any questions from anyone i hope you guys are not lost and you know you are able to understand all this any any questions on the simple mapping that i have run hello yeah, no, no. from my end no. okay Uh, so, uh, so to give you, uh, yeah. regarding like uh, the compute source, the secure agent, uh, we get compute through secure agent. Yeah, the secure agent, uh, I'll tell you in the secure agent, right? When you, when you configure the secure agent, uh, when you click on the local secure agent, uh, here, you know, we get different services, the common integration components and data integration server, mass ingestion, OI data collector. OI stands for uh, operational insights. When I click on this button here, I mean, when I click on this arrow, I get operational insights also. What is operational insights? Operational insights is like, you know, a dashboard uh, service which would give you the entire uh, statistics, the jobs that you have run, and you can see the, you can uh, view the graphs and everything there. So these are the different services, and you know, you see that uh, the status is showing us up and running with the version 17.02, 64.02, last update time. This is the last update time for all these 
services, which means that my secure agent is a self upgrading agent. I don't have to do any kind of upgrades because Informatica would send these upgrades to the secure agent because I registered to the org. When I register to this organization, which is my org, there is a there is a unique ID that is given for every organization. This is organization ID. Okay. So what is Informatica doing? Informatica would send regular updates, which means that you know product enhancements, like you know something about uh, integration components or data integration server or mass ingestion. It would continuously send uh, some kind of bug fixes or some kind of uh, added functionalities because they have a huge, uh, uh, huge expectation around uh, matching to power center because there are huge amount. I mean, there are there is there is a huge demand for ICS because a lot of migration projects are coming up. And coming back to your question, I think someone was asking me about migration projects. You know, how do you manage from power center to IACS? It's not an it's not an exactly an apple to apple comparison. You can't you can't directly shift and you know uh, lift and shift here because this is on a different model. This is on a model where it is interacting with this UI and it would actually send the information and gets updated. You know, with all the functionalities that you do. You create a mapping, you save the mapping, you, you do everything on cloud, right? You do everything on internet. But in Power Center, whatever you do, that information gets stored in the database as a and the respective repository tables, right? The repository tables, you get uh, that metadata stored. But you, we can't retrieve the information uh, like querying a database because the database concept is not doesn't exist here. I'm talking about metadata database. Metadata is managed by Informatica. So how do you retrieve the metadata? Okay, I'll tell you that. So I have a day wise uh, split uh, split of topics, you know, probably this is not updated one. I'll just show you the uh, one second. Okay. Okay, I see is training course content. So this is a course content, you know, what I would be taking up, uh, you know, as a part of different modules. We do all this uh, cloud overview, runtime environments and connections, creating uh, different connections like Salesforce, platform connection, Oracle connection, synchronization task, uh, basic transformations, and you know, advanced transformations and something like parser. You know, we'll be working on parser transformations, and uh, uh, we'll be creating. Uh, uh, mapping parameters and variables, how to work on uh, mapping parameters and variables, and also working on, uh, you know, the expression macros, how to work on expression macros, task flows, how do you create different levels of task flows, which include parallel and, you know, uh, sequential task flows, hierarchical connectivity, which is very important here, how do you create a web service, how do you create a rest to connect up, how do you create a hierarchical schema, intelligent structure model, and REST API. This would be covered when that is related to data integration. Let me be very specific about it because this entire course is a four weeks course. This is specific to data integration. And I'm going to cover the REST API. When you log into a Postman, how do you uh, how do you log in and how do you invoke your invoke your mapping task or how do you invoke a mapping uh, uh, task or sorry, a task flow, or how do you retrieve the logs, right? You get all this information through a postman. So you also need to have a postman installed on your uh, laptop. So as a prerequisite, right? What you need is you need a browser. I mean, you need a laptop, and you know you just have to enroll to a free trial account. And I would also recommend you install Oracle 19C on your machine. And what I can do is I can give you the give you the you know this uh, one minute. I can give you this uh, the files which are in my drive location. I can give you the sample script. This there is a sample script you know which I can give it to all of you to create a schema, which is called uh, 
there is a script for sample.ora. This script would have all the tables which you can import it. This is a script which would actually have you uh, with the data and also the tables. I can give you the script, but you need to download and install Oracle 19C and keep everything ready. And I can also give you all the files, the flat files as part of this training. Okay, so and again, you know, I have the topics fitted across uh, the four weeks. These are, uh, this is how, you know, I just uh, noted down. So forget about these dates, but week one, week two, uh, this is how what I would cover in the week one. Week two is this, uh, week three is these topics. Week four, we'll have this topics, REST API, you know, all this will be in the week, week four. Week three is mostly on uh, task flows and data synchronization on that. Week two is all the data integration uh, part of it. Week one, but I would appreciate, you know, everyone, uh, would complete their installation. I can help you. I can give you the guidance how to install it and also have the connections. So before you need uh, Blackwells is simple, but Oracle, you need an Oracle 19C installation. Okay. Uh, any any questions? Yeah. From me? yeah, I have one question actually. Is it possible to integrate uh, AWS, Azure, and Google uh, in our course part? See, AWS and Azure is again, you know, that is, uh, that's all tied up to your personal accounts, right? Your personal uh, accounts. Uh, it is not possible uh, for me because I have not included in the course duration because uh, that would be, again, you know, uh, you'll have a mix of uh, uh, thing actually along the course in the back. Yeah. yeah. The thing actually, what I, I am asking actually, we are just uh, actually uh, cloud services, Informatica Cloud. In addition to Informatica Cloud, we have multiple web services. Uh, correct, correct. Mm -hmm. correct. IACS. See, so, web services, uh, easy, can, yeah, nothing use, actually. Uh, some of the other need, databases, yeah. The data which is available in S3 back We don't need AWS or Azure for the training environment. You know, for web services, we I have a, a URL which we can work on. But, you know, if I, if I include AWS and uh, Azure, that would be a too complex thing because it's all tied up to a personal account and you can't, uh, I mean, that would be too uh, tough uh, for someone like, you know, a beginner who's uh, learning the no. IACS course for the first time. No, no. Have, I'm not asking have... much complicated. Yeah, I'm not asking about much complicated. Just I'm asking whether we can create S3 bucket or container. It's actually one month mm -hmm. trial account we can get in AWS. We can capture the file which you are going to extract from other sources then we can capture in mm -hmm. s3 because we can extract into our informatica cloud that's the minimum yeah, yeah, we, can do it. we can do it in aws but azure i have uh, not uh, you do also yet. same thing container azure. we can extract through informatica cloud mm -hmm. that part one other thing yeah. actually mostly most of the people right now connecting session level uh, configuration using the linux scripting as well as python scripting is it possible to how we can use, where we can use, when we can use Python that is going to be uh, see, for the coaching? In our, in, our, uh, in our training environment, I'll be working on the batch scripts actually because I'm on the Windows. Uh, you can actually compare it with your shell scripts and you know you can modify the code accordingly. But I would be working on batch scripts because my secure agent is running on my laptop, right? The secure agent has to talk to uh, these scripts, you know, these scripts have to be invoked. So how do I invoke this? Using a bash script. I have a bash script which are in turn calling my SQL scripts a couple of scenarios. I'll be working on only on bash scripts one. SQL script, I mean, the, the shell scripts and the other Python related scripts can be, uh, that's a bit little uh, complex things and you know, we don't have that environment well. Right? So that is the problem. So I can yeah. I can show it in the bash script section. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So any questions from anyone else? Okay. No questions. Uh, we are good to close, and I'm looking forward to talk to you soon. And please give your uh, email ID. I think someone has uh, put a message. Where do you install Oracle? Yeah, Oracle on your laptop. Just go to the Oracle website and uh, 
sign up to Oracle uh, site and download Oracle 19C, your Windows version. That's it. Oh, I want T2. Oh, it doesn't matter. Actually. You must be able to establish a connection uh, on the map. Okay, please send your details to the organizer and they will actually reach out to you. Uh, okay, thank you.